Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part five of the Monday Q&A. We're finally at an end, so let's get it done. All right, first question. How exactly does high carbohydrate intake cause water retention? I can't seem to find any consensus online and most people are stupid. If you mean subcutaneous water retention and the carbs spilling over to it, if you're drug free, don't worry about that. That is purely from the steroid world. Now, you will drop subcutaneous water purely from a calorie deficit. So just keeping your calories within check will prevent that and a very large calorie surplus can cause some general water retention irrespective of what you're eating under the skin. But generally, that massive bloating from large carb overfeeding is from the steroid world from guys just blasting wet compounds. That's the sort of thing that will make you bloat like crazy when you're on DECA or Debel, things like that. That's that is where that comes from. The natural world, guys, you're talking about that shit as naturals. They're lying to you. They're not fucking natural. They're blasting wet gear. That's what's causing that. And the carbs do play a big role there. But outside of that, if you're talking about the other water retention from it, it has to do with muscle glycogen because obviously glycogen has to start somewhere. Most of your muscle glycogen was carbs. You can get a little bit from protein and a little, little less from fat. And yes, people. Don't know biochemistry who think fat doesn't convert into glucose at all. Well, actually it can. I'm not going to get into the whole glycerol backing on, on the back of a triglyceride having a pathway to where it convert to it. But yes, around approximately one calorie from every gram of fat can become glucose in your body. So take that strict keto dieters who say they're not getting glucose from fat. Now... That glucose goes into your muscle tissue. Every gram of glucose attracts approximately one gram of water. So if you've stored an extra 50 grams of glucose in your muscle cells, you're going to pull in another 200 grams of water. That's 250 grams of water. That is half a pound, approximately. My math could be off in my head. So, yeah, the carbs will make you hold intramuscular water through cellular volume because the glycogen itself actually attracts water molecules to it. It has to. So that is what causes the water retention from the high carbs. Again, for naturals, going back into the other one, we're talking about hormone fluctuations and spillover from guys who are on drugs, but it, natural guys, that doesn't happen. All right, next question. Exactly how much sleep is needed for optimal muscle growth and nervous system rest and how detrimental to hypertrophy and strength is it to be getting less sleep? But four to six hours sleep pretty much every day be bad. I would say for the nervous system, four to six hours of sleep, unless you're in that rare five to 10% of the population that can thrive on that, your nervous system will not recover. Your brain will not recover. Your brain will not get enough REM sleep to properly cycle through your memory and basically defragment your memory hard drive in your brain so you'll, you'll suffer some memory problems and things. Your nervous system will not function optimally. You need seven or eight hours. Some people, again, the other extreme, the bottom five to 10% need up to 10 hours. Now, as far as muscle growth, I would say the more the better. If you are very serious about gaining muscle mass and gaining strength, you need to be getting eight hours of sleep a day. And I know that's an arbitrary number no, that isn't backed by science that every single person needs exactly eight hours because some can do very, very well on six and some might need 10, but eight is a good solid round number in between the range. So I would say that should be your baseline that you should shoot for and adjust from there. The cats are dragging a tripod. Oh, well. All right. All right. Next question. <laughs> Why are some people a lot more vascular than others? Z's had no veins sticking out and at 8% body fat, where a lot of people get thick veins standing out at 15% body fat. That's because Z's was a trend junkie. I don't know. Well, there are people who claim it. I have never seen anybody who uses trend as their predominant compound develop amazing vascularity from it who didn't already genetically have amazing vascularity. Trend does not improve vascularity that much. Ziz was a low test, high trend type of guy. That's what he ran. He was balancing them early on, but I think later near the end, he was mega dosing shitloads of, of trend with like a replacement dose of test. Uh, other drugs improve vascularity a lot more. Now, outside of that, the other factors that are going to affect vascularity for 
when drugs come out of the equation, it's going to be genetics. Some people are just genetically very vascular. The amount of cardio that you do, actually doing a lot of cardio can improve vascularity. And I don't know if he did cardio or not. Obviously, your body fat, which he was lean, so again, the genetic component there, he was lean enough, he should have been vascular if he was prone to it. And then your diet itself. Uh, Ziz actually ate supposedly a very, very clean diet, which probably meant low sodium. People who eat more sodium and more salt tend to have more vascularity, along with people who eat more carbohydrates. So those are all factors that play a role. Choice of drugs, genetics, body fat, cardio, and diet all play a role. So that's why some guys are more vascular than others. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh.